Hey guys, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to start sharing my screen. But I want this one. Okay, let's do this. Futures. All right, equities are just opening up. Kind of a very, very quiet day today, not much, uh, not much happening. Um, but I do have a lot of interesting stuff to talk to you about on the, uh, uh, on the currency side. So let's just see how we kind of rotate into the, wow, it's really not, is it 9.30 yet? No, I guess it's not 9.30 yet, it's 9.29. Um, yeah, I'm just watching how we're, you know, how we're opening up, whether futures are starting to run a little bit. Okay. Um, just the usual usual bump up they don't have any it's it's been a very very quiet um night ahead i really did not have any trades today and i really try not to have any trades today um until i until we get some some um directional move here so you know it looks like we're dumping on the open and that naturally puts the directional move to the you know, to the upside as a reversal move if we get it but it's still very early let me see. Let me see what the Dow is doing. Kind of the same thing. It's it's dumping a little bit too here, um, and uh, even the Russell is kind of dumping. So we, you know, we don't have any uh, any clean, clear trades, um, and we'll give it. You know, we'll give it a little time. But basically, we have to assume bias is down on the open, and. Uh, we're going to see if we can get a reversal move sometime in the next half hour on the uh, um, on the indices as our as our primary trade. But um, in the meantime, I'm just trying to see what's you know what else is going on over here. Right, just bear with me a second here, guys. Huh. Okay. Um, just trying to see, you know, what you know, what the market is trying to do here. Um, okay. So, in the meantime. All right, let's take our let's take our um, eyes away from uh, <clears throat> from equities for a second, and kind of um, talk a little bit about um, currencies. Because I actually um, I think I have where's my uh, I can't get can't, can't get this tab going. How do I get this thing to? Uh, oh man, go away. Okay, here we go. All right, uh, let me see if I can refresh this. So I want to I want to show you um, um, I want to show you kind of you know the latest oh man get out, get away from here um, latest trades overnight which were not very pretty I had two stop outs in um, in Aussie dollar and Kiwi dollar the uh, the opening of Asia which kind of tripped me up but. Um, it doesn't matter because this is all this is all very experimental because we are basically um, hang on just one second guys what is going on um, okay um, uh, here's the thing that that's kind of really really useful about FX my FX book 
when you look at each particular trade, if you hover over the information module over here, you guys, can you tell me if you guys see this? Um, you see how it says drawdown, you know, risk reward, that kind of stuff. Does everybody see the, um, um, the little pop-up window that it gives you? So what's very cool about that is we can go trade by trade by trade, and especially on, on the profitable trades, and see the single most important question, which is how much did it go against us before it went for us, right? And you know, obviously in these two particular, it really didn't go against us at all. You can see there's virtually no drawdowns. There's no virtual drawdowns. This here is obviously a big drawdown on the 20s. Uh, zero drawdown on the winners. This is a winner. This had a 1.4 pip drawdown against me. Um, obviously this was, a, this was a you know bad drawdown. I don't know what the hell this is. This this doesn't count because it's not a it's not a real trade. So this this was this had an eight pip drawdown against me. This had a thirteen pip drawdown against me, and this had a what is this? Oh, that's, a, that's a stop. This had a four point four pip drawdown against me. Uh, three point three. You, you know you can see that it sort of um, bunches up. And you know the, the real question you're trying to answer, the only way you're gonna be able to answer this with any degree of confidence is you're gonna to have to, have, I'm gonna have about a hundred trades. So it's really gonna to have to be this week, maybe even next week before we have a deep enough sample to say, okay, you know what? Um, the outer edge of risk that you need to assume on this is just maybe 15 instead of 20, right? Which is a huge difference because that saves you an enormous amount of pips um, uh, on a basis, right? We we just I don't you know we don't quite know this yet because I don't know how how big a drawdown, but it just seems like sort of like when the, the when the trades work, they pretty much work um, with you know with very very little negative um, negative move back. Most of the trades are clustered around like you know minus five, right? But we don't know, so you know we're sampling. We're, we you know we're taking the data. We're trying to figure out because obviously once you have that information you can then configure the strategy with much greater um, degree of accuracy, right? Um, so that's one, you know, that's, that's one issue. So basically, if you, if you were to look at what happened to me in, um, let's just start with the European session, because that's really the important session. So in the European session, I traded Euro, Pound, Pound, Yen, Euro, Yen. That's it, those, those four, right? Those are the four primary ones that I trade. Um, and the pound yen got, you know, made, made bank, uh, euro made bank, euro yen made bank. Um, the pound lost me money. And this is where it gets interesting because I find this to be very true quite a lot of times. So let's go to pound. So what, um, what's very, very productive, right? Is so this, I think this was the, the pound trade I took, right? So it took me over here. And it just kind of like, you know, you know, trailed off against me, uh, stopped me out. But what's very, very productive, which I find quite often, is that if you get stopped out, especially in Europe, on, you know, our home team bias trade, the next time you get a buy signal, you know, it, the strong, basically strong currency signal, it's actually very, very uh, high probability that that's, that's going to work. The second, you know, in other words, if the first gets stopped, the second, the second works. So it's not a bad idea to to take a you know to take a second try at um, at the run um, if you get stopped on the first one. Um, and if you think about kind of like the edge, if let's say you would ultimately you cut the edge to fifth minus fifteen, right? Um, if you got stopped on the first and then made money on the second, you know your your negative um, your negative count on the pound for the night is only minus ten. You know, that's offset against, you know, positive euro, positive euro, yen, positive pound, yen, um, you know, and all those things. So, you know, it keeps the edges um, a lot more profitable if you go in for, you know, for a second thing. If you really want to be aggressive, which, which you can be with currencies because we can, uh, we can, you know, we can make a, the initial trade so small that it doesn't really matter. Um, you could actually go two or three times the size and then your, um, your P&L is totally offset. Now, this is something I did today with the Aussie dollar, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but um, for, for different reasons. But the point being is that, is that um, there are two ways 
to refine our edge. One is to possibly cut our stop a little shorter so that the losses are, you know, the cumulative losses are much less. You, because see, your break-even point goes from 80 to 75. If we, if we, if we go 515, the break-even point becomes, becomes 75, which is significant. You're picking up 10, five additional percentage points on the spread, right? So that's, that's like issue number one. Um, the second thing is that if you, you know, if, if, if you're willing to, to take a, the second attempt in, in, a, in, in that directional move, generally you're going to, you're going, you're going to have, um, you know, a very high edge and you could essentially wipe out the losses by, you know, tripling your size um, on the second attempt so that that particular currency is just flat and all the other currencies are making money. So you're net positive for the day. Is everybody following me on, on, uh, you know, what I'm thinking about, what I'm doing here on, on those ideas? Is that clear? Now, the second thing that's really interesting is that, you know, Asia, so Europe obviously has lots of liquidity. Um, North America has lots of liquidity. You know, those are, those are strong continuation sessions, right? Um, but Asia is always problematic. Asia is the, is the least liquidity. And um, it's the one I think that makes you most vulnerable to this idea of like, okay, let me do home team bias. But it also offers us an incredibly interesting possible edge. Let me show you what, what, um, what I kind of discovered, right? So let's say we say to ourselves, I'm not gonna trade Asia. I'm not gonna trade Asia. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna look at what Asia does, at what Asia does. How we you know, what's the move? What's the first move in Asia, right? Um, so I consider the first move to be after eight o'clock New York, which is 20 hundred hours. And actually what, you know, what happened in Asia is you had, you had this, this, this up move that failed. You see like, it, you know, you have a, you, you, if you bought this, you, know, you, you literally got stopped out, right? So um, clearly the true move, what you're trying to do is figure out what's the true move, what's the true first move in Asia, true first move in Asia. And the true first move in Asia was negative to the downside, right? So, and, and I'm talking about, this is just Aussie and Kiwi. Let's just stay to Aussie and Kiwi because let's just assume for argument's sake, which I, I think it's not a big assumption, the dollar yen is so uh, liquid because it's, it's Australia and New Zealand are tiny economies. You know, Japan is a huge economy. There's a lot of flow that goes through. The continuation in dollar yen um, should work in Asia. And it actually does because last night this was, um, I traded dollar yen as well. And so remember, I'm starting at around eight o'clock at night. Um, let me just take you to dollar yen just to show you. And, um, Um, yes, actually, I think I started, I start, yeah, I think I started like, a, you actually want to start at around eight, nine o'clock. I, 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 I do find like eight o'clock is a, uh, sometimes can be a very um, uh, weak session. But regardless, I mean, even if you started like um, at around nine o'clock, you're looking for, remember, you're looking to sell dollar yen because you're looking for, for the first, you know, positive move towards that currency. So it was right over here. I took this trade. Um, it worked out, worked out perfectly fine. Um, but when you um, when you're doing Aussie, um, even if you were doing Aussie like at um, nine o'clock, if you the, the, okay, so let me let me kind of back up. Australia and New Zealand are much earlier uh, market entries. Um, um, sorry, guys, just one sec. Um, Sorry guys, I'm just trying. To, I'm just. I'm working with Daniel on the on the EA. Um, so um, um, sorry. You know what? Hang on, just just one sec. I just want to check something because he's asking me something that I really want to make sure I did not. No, that's false. Sorry, guys, just bear, just bear with me, because this is like he needs this this stuff. Shift Windows. Yes.
we're just having just a tiny issue in um, with the with the EA, and I, I'll get uh, I'll get to my point in just one second. If you guys just bear with me, you know, this, this is a problem with us trying to do a million different things, but nothing much going on in the uh, in the indices. We're still very very negative, so there's nothing. There's no trades here right now, so it doesn't really matter. Um, sorry, let me just send this to him. Uh, get over here. Just bear with me a sec, guys. All right, okay. Um, anyways, so you know we you know so we're in Asia, right? And we're looking we're looking at Aussie, and the first you know the first move in Aussie is kind of the uh, the false move. The true move is to the downside. The true the true move is to the downside, right? So here's the interesting concept, which seems to really replicate itself. And I, and I welcome you guys to check this out. If the Asian first move, like if the eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning Asia time um, is negative, then it's very, very likely to replicate itself in North America at around the same time, at around the same time. So if in North America, so I know that Asia, they sold Aussie at the beginning of Asia trade. Now I'm looking for a sell signal in Aussie at the beginning of the US trade, boom, boom, super easy trade to the downside, right? Same thing, they sold Kiwi um, at the beginning of Asia trade, like the uh, eight o'clock in the morning Asia trade, right? Um, and remember, the reason why Australia and New Zealand are a little bit earlier times is because they're two hours ahead of Tokyo as far as morning. So it's already like the activity starts at 20 hundred hours at New York time in New Zealand and um, um, New Zealand and Australia, and 2100 hours in in um, in, J in Japanese yen because it's, it's a little bit later. So here you know you see negative price action. For the first, for basically the Asian, how, the question is, how is the Asian morning? Is it positive and negative? If the Asian morning is, is negative, then I want to replicate that trade in the US morning. I wanna take that trade right over here, you know, in the US morning and boom, nice and clean trade, which is kind of cool, you know, kind of, kind of cool. Um, okay, just bear with me one more second, guys. Oh, 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 thank you. Sorry, I screwed up. Um, okay, so um, you get the idea? Aussie and Kiwi are actually super interesting to trade during the North American morning, depending on how they traded in the Asian morning. Is everybody following me on this? Um, and how about we just play this game? You guys give me a date. Give me a date, like type in a date and I'll go to that date. I, I don't type it into, um, to, I, I, can only, I can only go 20, 30 days back because that's that's all trading view can give me. But give me a date, you know, last month, in the past month. Let's go Kiwi. Let's go Aussie. Let's let's just kind of blind test this um, idea. And you, you know, and I'll show I'll show you some interesting ideas. So give me a date. Somebody type in a date. Because I because I want everybody to 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 understand that I'm going to do this totally randomly. I don't want I don't want everybody to think I'm I'm sandbagging you here. No, 315 is too late. I need um I need like a it's a one minute chart. Okay, 20th of April. Well that that's okay, that's easy. Fine. So I'm gonna take Miguel's 20th of April. And in the meantime, everybody, everybody, um, 
uh, type in a couple of other days. So I'm going to go 20th of April um, for Kiwi Dollar, right? Eight. 8.30 New York time, which is, which is around 10 o'clock in the morning, New Zealand. Let's see where the trend is. It's pretty clear the trend is to the upside, right? Like, I mean, it's, you can just, you just look at it. You know, there's, there really is very, very little uh, doubt here, right? So strong bias. Now, on the 20th of April, I'm going to walk myself towards the New York morning. And what I'm going to be looking for is a buy signal in New York morning after around 8 o'clock. Can I get a buy signal at around, after around eight o'clock? So I'm not getting any, any signals over here, right? Then I get the buy signal right over here, 948. My drawdown from 84 down to 77. I mean, it's, you know, it's not great, but it's not horrible. It's, uh, it's not even 10 points. And it certainly gives me more than enough five points. That's um, New Zealand, all right? Let's go to... Australia, same day, just for argument's sake, on the 20th of April. So 20th of April, Australia, go to, so this is 8.30. Um, you know, it, 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 it's not pretty, it's not pretty. And this is, this is where um, I actually, you know, sometimes it's, it's very, very clear. Sometimes it's really, really problematic. And it becomes in the eye of the interpreter. So um, in the case of here, you could make a case that, yes, the first, you know, the eight o'clock um, in the morning breakout of Australia is 77.28. I mean, you could actually, it's, it's actually good enough. It goes, it certainly goes more than five points really cleanly. It's still a legitimate uptrade, still a legitimate trophy. It really did not fail to the upside. Therefore, the first bias is to the upside. But it's a relatively thin bias. Nevertheless, we go back to North American. Oh, sorry. Oh, damn it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to go. Um, I want to go to North American um, morning. So now I'm going to go to North American morning on the 20th, around 8 o'clock. And now I'm looking for an upside bias. I need, I need an upside breakout. Again, I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. But then at around nine o'clock, breaks out, boom, I'm done on, on, on Australia. Um, give me another date. Give me another date um, where, you know, I can, I can pick up the first bias and then try, try to trade my second bias. And, you know, the thing is, obviously, it's going to be more difficult um, if the bias is not super clear and, and there, there is some element of interpretation but most of the time it's pretty clear if like sort of like if the rule is if it's going to go 10 or 10 or more in one direction or the other that's your morning bias that's that's the month that's the bias you want to take with you to um to north american trade um hello everybody how many people are in the room here that nobody's typing in a date i want a date otherwise it's not it's not fun if you don't play i don't play because i'm not you know driving the uh the content here. You guys got to give, give me a random date. But less than April 1. Okay, 418. 418. Let's go 418. Thank you, Peter. We're going to go to 418. Uh, 418 is a Sunday. So, Peter, I'm, I'm going to go to, um, well, I guess 418 is a Sunday night. So, I guess that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. So, let's go 418, 2030. Okay. So, where are we at? So, again, here, this really is a, a little bit interpretive. And, and you could almost say, well, you know, we had the, the, you know, the, the upside move, which was kind of weak. It was 71.19 to 25. I mean, it barely made five points. Then a kind of a downside move. But then it kind of really established an upside move. And I think the beauty of, of being able to look at the Asia session is that you don't really necessarily have to make your um, interpretation on the first, you know, five or 10 minutes of the move, you can kind of take the, you know, how was the hour? Did they make, I guess maybe the way you could look at it is say, did they make fresh highs in Asia session? If they made fresh highs in Asia session, then I'm just going to basically say, okay, the impulse, the impulse move here in the, in the North American uh, from eight o'clock onward in North American morning should be to the upside, right? Let's see if I'm correct. So now I go to, to um, North America morning, eight o'clock, and I'm looking for the first buy signal in Australia um, after eight o'clock. 
can I, I get, get it right here? I get it right here. It's not beautiful, but it's enough to, you know, to get me done. It's, it's, um, it, I'm basically coming in at 69. It goes to, to 76, 77. Definitely, definitely makes me five points um, to the upside. Um, so, you know, not super, super uh, strong, but good enough to give me, to give me a decent bias um, that I was able you know, to trade this. Um, uh, go ahead. So Australia, right? We're going to do Australia um, to the 18th. Let's see. Let's see where that bias was. So here's Australia. Very, very similar kind of up, down, up. So you, you know, you're interpreting it like, okay, it, the, the impulse was still more, more to the upside than to the downside because we made a little bit higher highs. So again, I'm going to go to the eight o'clock um, North American open for, for New Zealand and look for any kind of buy triggers over here. And I have a buy trigger over here that really, uh, let's see, 87 goes down to 76. And uh, wow, it's just look look at that. That was you know month. I guess Monday is, is is a perfect example of why you don't want to trade it, right? So, eighty seven seventy six really does not. That fails. It just basically fails. You you have to just say it fails. It doesn't really trade. I mean, it just kind of stays in that fifteen point range. Doesn't really give you a look. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just basically it's it's a fifteen point range, not 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 a very very clear thing. So not always going to give you a, a win, but it gave you a win like three out of four, which is a pretty pretty decent you know pretty decent edge, right? So far, and um, if you keep going on front, no, I think Friday is better. I think Monday is always the the worst day because it's just everybody coming out and there's very little liquidity unless there's some really big news. If there's big news, then then I think you, you then you, if it's if you have a strong Sunday night open, then you definitely have um, some you know I think so, some continuation in North America. So I got a couple of more dates here. So Karen is giving me um, the the seventh of April. Let's go look at seventh of April. This is for New Zealand. It's just just well just I'll just change I'll just change them around. So New Zealand goes seventh of April. I think pretty clear New Zealand is definitely upside break here, right? You can you can make the argument that we did an upside break here. So that means um, on the 7th of April, North America session, I'm looking to see if I get an upside break um, in the morning. Um, unfortunately, here's what happens. Well, I, you know, I, I, I do get the secondary break here. It's at 8.34. We had, you know, the, the upside break happens very, very early in the morning, 7 o'clock. Um, and it still has continuation. So, I mean, I, I basically, bottom line is I make money. I'm in at 50, 70, uh, 70.50. It goes like 70 43 the worst against me and then ultimately goes 70 60 so more than five you know more than five points um certainly certainly a winning trade um maha is telling me the 9th of uh 9th of april let's do let's do aussie dollar 9th of april let's see how we can look at this so 9th of april aussie dollar oh 9th of april was a uh, was a bad day um, let's go to the, let, cause, cause that's not a real day. Okay. So the, let's do 11th of April. So here, super clear on the 11th of April, we're negative, right? I mean, there's just zero doubt where it was, you know, Aussie starts falling in Asia session. So can I have, um, some edge by trying to sell my Aussie, um, in the, in the North American open? And I can, you know, I mean, depending on, depending on, as I said, you know, sometimes the, the signal is a little bit before the eight o'clock hour. But if you took this signal, you know, you have, you have a strong break signal here, 76.30, it definitely makes the, um, um, the move down to, to, to 23. What is that? That's a 30 to, to 23. You certainly make five points down here. If you were a little bit patient, you had a nine o'clock trigger over here that was even easier to, uh, to trade. Um, but it's kind of cool how Asia can inform, can inform North America. And then you have just a little bit more confidence to trade, um, to trade the direction in North America when the signal pops up, right? Um, so, because I think it's just you know it's just it's it, it to me, I, you know we're trading eight currencies. You're it's already a, a lot of positions, a lot of a lot of balls in the air. You want to minimize your your chance of randomness as much as possible, right? And um, it seems to me that I think what I want to do is I want to take my Asia session trades 
which you know, which I'm just kind of laying on uh, directionally, and pull them into North America. Just use Asia session to help me um, get my get better get get better accuracy out of uh, um, out of North America. Um, as far you know, as far as the other stuff goes, it's definitely um, definitely uh, working well in a direction of what I call the home team bias, where it um, um, you know it trades in, in in your direction. Although I think Canada, no, Canada is working for me also. So Canada is working for me. This is this you know remember Canada, you, you're selling dollar cat, not not buying dollar cat. Um, you're selling dollar yen, not buying not buying dollar yen. Um, the, the one place where it seems to work very, very, very cleanly, and maybe, you know, that's all you, you know, that's all you need. We don't, we don't need like a million. Every time you put on a new instrument, right, you're actually adding to your risk, not, not, not subtracting from it, because, because you're adding to the, to the kind of, you know, randomness of behavior, right? So the one thing that seems to really shine so far in, in, this, in this data set is the European currencies, for the most part, really do um, have positive trend sometime during the European session. Sometime during the European session, when, you, when we get the, uh, the, the upside breakouts, um, there's continuity and it's pretty strong continuity you know, our way. In the meantime, man, I'm looking at um, stock indices and it's just such a complete, NASDAQ is getting shaved here, I think, I think, Tesla is really kind of dragging everything down. Um, it looks like, you know, it, it might be an hour before we get enough stabilization and a turn to the upside to even merit an upside trade. Uh, on the Dow, we have nothing really, you know, we, we kind of just, just back to, you know, to range bound trading, not much really anything going on here. So not really, nothing really interesting going on. Um, as far as that's going on, and um, um, the Russell, if I were going to trade anything today, like if you want to trade the long side, Russell has been sort of relative bid. It opened up negative, right? And to me, this is, seems to be like we can actually we can actually hang out for the next uh, 20, 30 minutes. See if this because if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna trade a setup that I think is um, viable, it would be to rustle to the long side. I, I you know I'd need I'd need a long you know I think we're actually it's still depending on where we end up here. This trend stays positive. So in other words, Russell would have to break up above this uh, trend line break to uh, to give me a genuinely quality long signal. But yeah, you know that is. Um, is the only thing that's kind of that's kind of looking interesting right now on the uh yeah so last night you know tesla came out and then tonight today we have apple um and microsoft i believe no no, no. yeah we have apple and microsoft today and then we have uh, facebook tomorrow and google tomorrow i think so you know it's a very very heavy heavy week for nasdaq um and look we know we're getting we get kind of getting the uh the rise in, in the Russell. So let me, uh, I'm actually going to put this on my thing. Let me see if I can put this. Uh, bear with me. I'm just, I'm, I'm just configuring my own algo. So. Um, so it has it hasn't cleared the the trend line, but if but the the, the Russell trade is is one point you know up four points again. So obviously, also a very very neg you know negative um, risk reward, but um, but it's a reversal trade. So it's you know it's a really really hopefully it'll be a high quality trade. It needs to uh, needs to break the uh, the trend line over here in order to. Um, um, in order to, to trigger a trade. Um, and I know that Russell is not is not something that anybody likes to trade on the uh, on the CFDs. So this is really for almost um, educational purposes only because because the spreads on on the Russell are not great. So it, it gives me a strong break, but only twenty seconds. I still need twenty, you know, um, 
I need this thing to complete through a, tr a strong break in order for it to, uh, to rally. NASDAQ is still very, very down. It's clearly, you know, Russell relative strength today. But it, they, even that is not, not having a hard, easy time coming up. Um, all right, guys, watch the screen for just a minute. If, if it triggers, my, my algo will trigger and I'll let you know. I just gotta, I just gotta do something for just five seconds, and I'll be back to to the computer. Uh, watch, yeah, you know, watch, watch if this price action breaks to the upside, and we and we get any continuation on it. Uh, so far, nothing going on, right? This is, this is the story of the day today. Kind of a very, very uh, soggy market. Consumer confidence came in very strong, 129. Oh, I wanted to show you something really good. Um, since so today is kind of a very slow day, this is it. Mean, let me. I'll send you guys the link in uh, in Slack. Well, let me show this to you. Actually, it's kind of very cool. Let me go. It's in the content juice. There's this website called Financial Juice. It's um, it's a pay per view website, but they have a you know the thing that I like about it. it you know, there's like a I think a twenty second delay, which really doesn't matter. Let me, uh, I'll send this to you guys in the link. But it's kind of, they basically trying to be like the Bloomberg for the retail trader. Um, you can you can buy a lifetime license for $999 or I think $200 for, for, a, um, for a year. Um, if you really, really, really want, you know, super fast um, uh, news. But you don't really need it because, I mean, the beauty, you can see the beauty of it is it just tells you everything that came out today, all the latest um, news flow that's, you know, that's coming in and any, any hot data, which they, they mark exactly like Bloomberg with the, with the red line. So if you want to be just instantly um, apprised of what's going on, you pretty much, you know, you, you don't really need a Bloomberg. Uh, so um, I thought this was kind of fun. They also have, um, you know, flow service uh, from the tick box, which is, which is a, um, a voice box that tells you, you know, like what, what, what they're reading on, on, the, on the headlines and everything else. Um, and yeah, like I, I actually think, you know, 999 for, an, for a lifetime membership is a really great deal for this thing. But um, I, I, I like it even as a, on, a, on a free format, you know, just as a, um, um, as a, as a scroller. And then, you know, it has Forex, you can do equities. It will tell you, you know, what the, um, well, you know, what equity news is coming out, um, crypto, you know, whatever stuff like that, indices. I mean, it's really, uh, it's pretty cool, you know? Um, and, uh, I guess, I guess you could configure your news, which I didn't know you could do. That's pretty cool, right? All right, let's go look what's going on over here. We're still, we still can't climb the, uh, the trend line. Still not able to break anything to the upside. So we'll see. Um, in the meantime, the only, the only thing I have floating out here, which was, 
what was I trying to, I was trying to sell this. So I think I, I think it, again, it's a very, very sloppy morning. I was trying to get, so I got short here at Dollar Canada and it's basically just break even for me right now. It's really not doing anything, but um, I think the target on this thing is, uh, where's the target? It's um, 92, oh, 92, 97, 92, okay. All right, so this should be interesting. I mean, I don't know if, uh, I, I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, let it play out. Um, maybe finally we get a little bit of uh, Canadian strength here. Um, to the thing, but you know, today's the, the whole point being is that you're not, you know, um, the sometimes like session where you start the session is is a matter of luck as well, right? If you if if you started the session at six in the morning, uh, positive Canada, that you know the trade would have been already done. Um, I'm not a fan of like changing the rules. So I still like the eight, eight o'clock in the morning um, opening because it's it, it just seems to be a little bit um, uh, more in tune. But, you know, the point being is that, yeah, sometimes you, you're going to you, you're going to get, you know, bad fills um, just just uh, on, on matter of luck um, on, on this trade. The bottom line is that even like I, the, the thing I think is interesting is that as kind of like as many errors as you make it's still net positive expectancy. It's still net positive expectancy because if you look at this and just ignore the little, the little negatives because these those, those are fake trades, you're still basically looking at, this is 20 trades, four of them are negative, right? And then you go to over here and then you have um, more of these. It basically starts over here. So this is like, what is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 14 trades, 14 trades, um, and only one of them is negative. Again, ignore this one, because that, that's, that's, that's not part of the uh, thing. So what you have here is you had 20 trades plus 14 trades, 34 trades, 34 trades out of which five, just five were negative um, with no optimization, no kind of, you know, uh, fine tuning of the risk control, none, none of that stuff. And remember, as I said to you, you can look at the uh, um, at the drawdown carry. Like, let's actually good to go back. You know, let's go back on the in, in the earlier trades. You can see the drawdowns: eight and a half per eight and a half pips. Um, what's the drawdown here? Why isn't this? I don't think it has a drawdown. One point eight pips, nine point three pips, zero point three pips, eight point seven pips. Uh, uh, eight and a half pips. Uh, well, this doesn't count. Uh, zero pips, one pips, three pips, half a pip. What is this? 8.4 pips. So you really don't see it. As a matter of fact, if you were, um, if you were just to use this sample, because it's not enough, it's only about 30 trades, you saw only one trade, only one trade that is a winner that had a minus 13 pip drawdown. Every other trade, so 12 out of whatever, or, or, or however many, how many winning trades, let's actually count how many winning trades we had here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There we go. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So 26 winning trades, only one of them, only one out of those trades went more than uh, 15 points against, you know? So, um, you know, even if, you know, even if I was to like, uh, just just cut this to 15 points, just cut this to 15 points, um, my PL becomes much better. You know, I have, um, I have five, so here we have five trades, um, there were minus 20 out of all, you know, out of like the 35 trades that I did, because there's, there's one on the other side too. If I cut that by five, that now saves me 25 pips, you know, to the good in the, um, uh, in the structure, which is kind of really cool. So, um, so unfortunately, guys, the Russell is doing nothing. It's kind of a very boring day. I literally don't have any trade setups that are, that are legitimate. Um, 
Dow is doing nothing. Dow can't break out. Russell can't break out. I think it might be one of those kind of things where everybody sleeps and then maybe at 11, 1130, it starts to, uh, to pick up and maybe give us, I think the, the reason is, the reason why the, the markets are quiet is because they're waiting for the Apple earnings. Apple is a huge factor in both the Dow, the S&P and the NASDAQ. And so the whole day is just going to be spent positioning and not really, not, nobody's going to move anything until after Apple kind of tells them what the state of affairs is. So today could be one of those kind of days, uh, which is why it's, it's very, very slow. Uh, you know, but the cool thing is we, we, we have FX to, uh, to keep us amused. Um, anyways, I hope you guys kind of like, like this whole idea of um, Asia morning to North America morning. I think there's definitely some forecastable ability there. And with, with, our, with our tool set, it becomes even, even, you know, even better. Um, I actually think that I may have the uh, the good version of the uh, of the tool that you know that that takes one trade and stops the EA that takes one trade and stops. So I'm just going to run it for a little bit longer today to make sure because it looks like I was the one that screwed up my my settings. Um, and if it's good, then I'll I'll put it out tomorrow and we can you know we can talk about it then. All right. Um, any questions? Anything else on your mind, guys? Um, anything you're thinking about? Otherwise, it looks like we're just dripping, dripping lower here. Um, you can you can tell how how boring it is because the price action is so slow that you know we're just we're not even moving uh, fast. Um, anyways, what else? Anybody doing anything today? You guys traded any, any positions? No. Everybody's asleep. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Crossy, what'd you do today? Oh, gold. Yeah, gold is is one thing that I that you know that we should start looking at. I, I just trying to focus on on indices and and FX kind of get a really, really strong fix on what we want to do. But then, you know, then we can start looking at, come on, I want to look at gold and crude because um, I'm almost certain that, that we can find edges in the, um, uh, in the trade. Um, you mean like, oh, uh, you, you just, you're just trading failure today. So like, like if it, um, if it doesn't, if it doesn't like when, when it gives you a diamond, right. Where it, where it um, tries to break to the upside and then kind of fails. Um, you're taking the other side. I mean, today is a great day for that. Looks like Russell uh, finally gave up any pretense to, to a rally starting to come down as well. I actually like, if you guys, you know, we, we can just play this, you know, for fun. I actually would be short Russell here at 91, was it 91, nine, basically 91 two, looking to see if we can make 2290. Cause it looks to me like, like this, uh, uh, the trade, you know, I mean, it's maybe it's just range bound, but it looks to me like like the bias now is starting to turn a little bit negative. We'll see. Um, oh, sorry, what do you, Karen? What do you? So you're saying you're trading this? Um, the first you're selling on the first hit of the line, and you just try to buy back at the moving average. Is that what you're trying to do?
That's kind of an interesting idea. Yeah, it does. I mean, you know, it definitely does. Although, although if you try to buy the line here, you would have got you would have gotten your head handed to you. Yeah, because that's well, that's you know, that's the opening break. Um, that's interesting, actually. I'm kind of looking. I'm looking. I'm looking at the. Uh, well, this is a, this is M2K. Let's look at let's let's look at Russ, at the NAS, which is a, which is a better. Um, Better idea. So I guess you're kind of just going for four or five points, right? It's just a scalp. So if you hit the second line over here, 34 comes down to eh, three, four points uh, your way. But um, the what the if if you this is this is the um, the line, the line kind of builds over here. Like, where, where, where would you like in this particular example? Where would you been? Would you where would you been? Where would you been short? Because it doesn't build until this is the the height. It kind of hits the high and then comes back down over here. Would you? Are you selling on the close of this candle? Like basically this candle over here. On the green one, interesting. Okay. Huh, that's interesting. It's an interesting, um, interesting idea. Um, yeah, and you know where where it really really works well. It always works well in a range bound in a range bound market. The trend lines are always going to fail by definition because they are basically the the containment of the range, right? So anytime you are you can be at the top of the range and sell. Or at the bottom of the range and buy, by its very definition, you know you can have um, you can have an interesting um, interesting trade idea, and um, you know in like one interesting way where you could you could create a risk parameters is um, well in this in this case you you know you don't have what is this this is the bottom of the range I guess in, in this case. You couldn't really create a you know a range background, but here you would have um, here's a top the move in the range here is uh, was it 24 to 16 uh, let's say 10 right so you're looking for um, half the range as your target so if you use if you use the range as a stop so you you know you, you buy over you know this is a tap. You um you buy over here, you look for just five points to the upside, and you just you know, you'd make that right over here on the range, um as kind of a move. And uh, I'm just trying to see like here's the bottom range, top range, right? If you were to you give yourself what's the difference in this range here? It's 26 to 30. Let's say another 10 point stop. So you are selling 32. And you just just survive the ten, you know, the ten point stop and coming, you know, coming back down. So in kind of in a in a range band, you know, in a range bound amount. Basically, this is a great strategy to do in Asia and Europe when you don't have a lot of movement, and you can try to trade within the ranges, you know, just sort of like um, trade the bottoms and the tops of the ranges. But the key thing is you got to buy very very close to the bottom or very very close to the top because if you buy in the middle of the range, you kind of put yourself in the uh, um, in the uh, in, in an unfavorable position um, as as it goes, but it's sort of interesting. Yeah, um, you could yeah you could have even, you could have even like worked worked this little range here if you wanted to. Um, otherwise, guys, nothing much. Man, is it uh, uh, is it boring? Nothing much going on. Um, you know, let's uh, let let let's play the. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Asia against North America for tomorrow. Let's see. Let's see how you guys do on that. Um, 
And in the meantime, just kind of let me know how you guys are doing on the uh, on the European Open because the European Open is really a very very fertile um, trade opportunity for the euro, the pound, the euro yen, and the pound yen. For the most part, it's it's been a very it's been a consistently you know great session for quite a long time. So you know, so let me know how that goes. All right, guys. Um, I'll see everybody tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have a little bit more action here. But today has just been a very, very quiet day uh, because of, um, I guess, we're, we're all waiting for earnings. So, um, you know, be that as it may, I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.